Good morning, everybody. This is Joe Schmidt, and I have here as my guest today, Oliver Corneli. Oliver is a professor of infectious diseases at the University of Cologne, and he is running the Accelerate. Today, we interview him and we ask him questions on what is this all about to learn and understand why this is an important consortium. Good morning, Oliver, to Cologne, and I'm happy to see you here. My first question to you would be in one sentence. Accelerate, what is this all about? Good morning, Joe. Thank you for the invitation and for the opportunity to share insights on Vaccelerate and my views on Vaccelerate. What is Vaccelerate all about? Vaccelerate is all about increasing the speed of vaccine clinical trials and increasing or shortening the time that it needs until licensure. So it is about speeding up clinical trials, which is quite timely. In COVID, we saw how important it is to come up with a new product on a short time. What does the name stand for? What, 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 what does it mean? Yeah, actually, it's just all in the name. It's vaccines and accelerating development of vaccines. And that is for academic as well as for uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, vaccine developers, where we offer our services. So you work with industry and you work with academic partners. How do you select your partner, how your partners, how does this all work out? How does it function? Well, we selected the partners to represent as many countries as possible within the European Union because the entire endeavor is financed by the European Commission and outside countries, but within Europe. So currently we are uh, restricted to Europe, but represented in almost 40 countries. I guess the restriction to Europe has to do with the licensing progress, uh, with a licensing process over here, which is different from the United States and other areas of the world. Is, is that the background? Uh, the restriction to Europe is actually because we are funded by the Horizon 2020 program. And so we were restricted from the beginning to the countries represented in Horizon 2020 in Europe. So uh, that, that is why it's restricted to Europe. Uh, we do plan for the future to expand, but we don't know whether we will do that. I, it would be something that we definitely want to do outside Europe. Okay, but industry partners can be from around the globe or are they restricted to Europe as well? No, industry partners can be from everywhere. So we counsel a lot of industry partners, dozens, uh, and it's amazing how many companies are into Corona vaccines. So they are from places where we, well, from really uh, far away time zones from a European perspective, all the way to, I guess we cover them all time zones. That is great. So it looks like you're busy already uh, in the current situation with many countries from around the globe. Now, why is the University of Cologne coordinating um, this accelerator? I mean, I have known you for decades as a great fungal expert, and now all of a sudden you're running a consortium in Europe for uh, vaccine trials. Um, yes, so thank you for pointing out the fungal background. So uh, actually, that, that's, that's perfectly true. It's a, it's a lot of fungal trials that we did. The thing with fungal trials is that it's extremely difficult because all the fungal infections are rare diseases. And so it's really difficult. And if you can make it in fungi, then if you have such a reliable, great team, then you can make it in abundant viral diseases too. So we had the machinery on how to design clinical trials, how to engineer them. We had that up and running. And I guess that is why we were asked or tasked with the Vaccelerate Consortium. So your trial expertise was used for a new topic to speed up things to make sure that we get licenses for vaccines or at this time set vaccines very soon in the future for pandemics to come or currently for Corona. This is the current status, right? Yeah, that's true. We have always done uh, some vaccine trials, but not to the extent now really it is the focus for us. We didn't stop fungal trials, but it's the focus now to do vaccine trials. And that is because of the the clinical trial skills, I'd say, of the team. Yeah. 
So how does the whole thing work? I have a great idea how to come up with a new Corona vaccine. I give you a call and what do you tell me? Yeah, you give a call and in the first contact, we will uh, actually find out what exactly has been done already, what has been achieved and, and where you stand in your drug development. And, and that then drives who would come on board to council. Um, it could, for example, be our advisor to Accelerate, Joe Schmidt. And who comes on board then for that initial um, uh, council, um, counselation or for that in initial advisory uh, meeting is uh, driven as said by where you stand with your drug. Well, how does Accelerate work? I have a great new vaccine. I have an idea for a vaccine. I have a vaccine candidate and I'm eager to have it on the market, maybe tomorrow. So I give you a call and I ask you, Oliver, can you help me? What will you do? What will happen next? Well, I guess first it's easy to find Vexcelerate because we are on social media, website, etc. You can drop an email. You will always get a response within hours. Uh, I say within hours, usually even faster, but if, uh, your call or your email arrives in the middle of the European night, then it might take a couple hours. Then we figure out next step, what exactly do you need? And that is driven by where does your drug development stand? How early or late is it in development? And we do counsel from preclinical all the way to phase three or even four. So there is nothing that we cannot counsel because we have 150 experts within Accelerate, uh, so there's every expertise there. And then we have a meeting with the expertise needed specifically for your project. Um, that will be crisp and like a one hour meeting. And usually we uh, have considerable progress and relevant advice within that one hour. And then we take planning from there. So the added value of Accelerate is to help set up and run clinical trials. And do you have contacts to, or do you even contact uh, licensing agencies? Yes, uh, that is certainly part of our duties because with the example of Corona vaccines, uh, you figure out easily that many drug developers have the same obstacles and the same issues they need to cope with. So instead of each individually contacting the licensing agencies, we are in close contact with the European Medical Agency. Yes, that is clearly one of our tasks. So we feel obliged to clarify with the agencies, specifically the questions that come up for with all the new drugs. Uh, for example, how can I do a comparator clinical trial? What should be the comparator? What are the schedules that are uh, the ones that should be followed? Um, how can I find um, patients or, uh, or healthy volunteers for my trial? And what are the legal frameworks? And some of these legal issues are not clear because Corona is new. So several companies might come up and that has been actually the past and the present with the same issues we clarify them with EMA we learn their position we are in very close contact practically every week and with other licensing agencies on a national basis as well so the added value is really enhancement speed would you also be able to head to head to do head to head trials Yes, we are currently actually doing a head-to-head -head trial, which is one of the very, very few head-to-head -head trials, but that's the future because we have standards now and we need to compare new vaccines versus these standards. We do still placebo-controlled studies as well, but that is on a very small scale because it's difficult to find uh, patients who have not received any vaccine and are um, uh, willing uh, to go on a placebo controlled trial, but the, the future is more in the head to head trials. Yeah, and I guess that is quite difficult because 
companies usually don't have access to other vaccines, right? This is a this is a challenge with uh, with COVID. The question then comes up: you speed up, and uh, I guess you have registries. I saw that on your website. You have patients on standby. Can you elaborate a little bit more on your registries? Yes, sure. So uh, that's perfectly true what you say. We have volunteers on standby. Uh, the majority is healthy volunteers, but we do have volunteers with all kinds of diseases as well. So we can nicely filter with the inclusion exclusion criteria of any given trial and see how many volunteers are left over, so to say, and live close to the clinical trial sites. Since we currently dwell on a number of 36,000 volunteers, about 4,000 of these are, uh, are between the age of zero and 17, and 90% uh, are ad adults. So we don't have lower or upper age limits. And we always find more volunteers than you would need for any given clinical trial. And you run studies with children? Yes, currently we run three studies where well, Accelerate is the sponsor together with uh, the respective universities uh, within Accelerate. And we have three studies. One is a pediatric study where we evaluate whether uh, kids who went through Corona, what exactly is the best schedule to immunize them uh, after uh, that event. And that study is led by the University of Utrecht, by our colleagues from there, and is run all over Europe or will soon start all over Europe in eight countries. Very interesting because this opens uh, your consortium for PIP, for pediatric investigation plans. And I guess that is another uh, big advantage that you offer. How do you measure success? Uh, your, the, the people who give you money, they want to see if you're successful, right? What do they ask for? What do you show them? Well, um, I need to expand very briefly on how Accelerate is structurally organized, internally organized. So we have 13 work packages, 13 areas of focus where we can speed up clinical trials in vaccines. And within the work packages, you have a number of tasks. So it's a three digit number of tasks and it's a three digit number of milestones and deliverables. So that's actually how the uh, success is measured. There are other measures of success um, and that is, for example, uh, how many people do attend our meetings. Uh, so you see um, here and there in meetings some attrition, then you need that, then you know, you realize that meeting needs a different focus, needs to be reshaped because it might not uh, any longer be exactly in the focus of the accelerate participants. So that is how we constantly learn and processes evolve. But in a nutshell, the milestones and deliverables is how we are measured by the European Commission. Very good. Yeah, very good. And I guess I should have started the whole interview with saying congratulations that you're running this. You got big money from the European Commission, and this is already a big achievement, right? So uh, many people look for government funding in that size. So this is this is really a very good measurement of success already and now you're delivering nicely as i can follow so where would i see a follow-up of your activities i want to see where do you stand what are your successes where would i look well we are now one year into accelerate out of three years which is the initial funding period so for 2024 and onwards uh, we will more and more focus on other vaccines I believe that we will keep the corona focus for quite some years, but we will add other vaccines, influenza, for example, pneumococcal vaccines, there are vaccines where we are in contact with developers. So industrial or academic um, um, entities who are developing a vaccine can always contact us, even though it's not a corona vaccine, because we absolutely help with all the measures that we can help with, uh, with any other vaccine. I'm an infectious disease physician, so I know that vaccines are the most important um, 
um, measure that we can take uh, to tackle infections all the way from corona to antibacterial vaccines. Uh, that's the way to go. That brings me back to fungal infections. The best effect of treatment is if you start before the infection. That's what I remember from my fungal investigations decades ago. Oliver, this was extremely interesting. Thank you very much for the update. In the end of the interview, we will have one slide to just show how you can contact Oliver and some links that you can um, click for additional information. Thank you again for your time and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Joe. Same to you. Thank you. Bye.